We need to fuel ourselves over the course of a triathlon, and obviously the longer we go, the more fuel we're going to need. Fine. But where on earth do we store all that fuel, and how? Do we take 20 gels to our top tube? Do we have a massive bento box on our bike? Or do we squirt the gels out of the sachets into the bottles, dilute it down? But then what on earth do we do with our electrolytes? So many questions, so I thought it's time we ask a pro, but not just any old pro, Leon Chevalier, recent winner of Ironman South Africa, all whilst taking on 108 grams of carbs per hour. That is a heck of a lot, so it's time to find out how he did it. Well, Leo, firstly, huge congratulations on your fantastic result at Ironman South Africa. You punched the ticket to the Ironman World Championships. Quite nice to do that early on in the season, I bet. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that was the main goal going out to South Africa. Very uh, early race um, in the season and uh, got the ticket, got the slot, got another Ironman win, got a good PTO points. Happy. Awesome. Well, I'd love to talk to you about the race, but actually here today we're going to talk more about your nutrition. And we've got your bike here because we're going to talk through exactly how and where you store all your nutrition. Now, we know from your nutrition partner, Precision Fuel and Hydration, they almost create a case study from each of your races. Um, in fact, for a lot of their athletes. So do recommend checking out the website for that. And from that case study, we know that you consumed around 108 grams of carbs per hour, which is quite a lot for Ironman South Africa for an Ironman, uh, 776 milligrams of sodium per hour, 846 milliliters of fluid per hour, 917 milligrams per liter relative sodium concentration, and finally, 319 milligrams total caffeine. And we know, obviously, you've done some testing with precision fuel and hydration. You're a pretty salty sweater, just shy of 1,400 milligrams per liter. Um, and considering you're racing in South Africa, fairly hot conditions, 23, 25 degrees Celsius, and add to that, it was quite stormy conditions, so the humidity was higher. That's going to affect the evaporation of your sweats. There's another challenge to fight with there. So with all that in mind, I want to understand how you're reaching those numbers with the nutrition you're taking on and, of course, how you're storing it all. Uh, before we get onto the bike, though, let's start kind of pre-race. Uh, what are you taking on in the morning? Well, I don't have it with me here, but I usually have around 300 milliliters of black tea because I'm proper British now. Yeah. Um, and I have that with about 300 grams of banana bread. Uh, so yeah, it's quite easy to eat. You know, you're, it's 6 a.m. No, it's actually 4 a.m. Two hours before race start and you don't really have that much appetite, but I feel like it's something that I can easily eat. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I'll have a sip of uh, about maybe 500 milliliters of water with uh, pH 1500 electrolyte tab. So it's just to top up my sodium levels before going into the race. Okay, so that's breakfast. How about kind of the 30 minutes or so leading into the race? Yeah, so for me, 30 minutes before the start is always a bit chaotic because I'm trying to get my wetsuit on, trying to get to the swim start, uh, trying to get warmed up. But at the same time, I usually have a caffeine gel maybe like five to 10 minutes before the start. Um, you know, that taste of coffee at the back of your mouth, it kind of uh, gets you fired mm -hmm. up and then uh, you get the hit like for the last little bit of um, of the swim so that's it just a bit of water just stay warm nice and you've preloaded on your electrolyte that morning a bit so now moving on unless you've figured out kind of how to fuel during the swim then i want to know but uh i assume the next point is on to the bike that you're yes well, you fuel on. yeah the, the pace i'm swimming right now I, I would have time for a little break <laughs> but yeah nice one okay so uh what are you taking on during the bike then uh, quite a lot. Every time I'm packing the bike to go um, to a race, I'm like, I've got two kilos of gels and electrolytes. Uh, so I've laid it all out here for the bike. Um, these are per bottle. So I've got basically two times one litre bottles and this one's about 500 milliliters. And each has got one of these big PF90 gels. Um, 90 grams of carbs. 90 grams of carbs. Uh, they're about 150 grams in total, as in total volume. Um, so I'll just put a bit of water at the bottom of the bottle, squeeze a gel in, and then I'll put some of these sachets. Uh, two of the bottles will have two sachets, and one bottle will have three. That's uh, 1,500. 
So kilograms. each sachet yeah, is sodium. actually 750 Sorry, yeah. milliliters, um, uh, milligrams of sodium. So uh, for each bottle, I'll have, well, these two, I'll have 122 grams of carbs and 1500 milligrams of sodium. And that bottle at the back, I'll have 138 grams of carbs and 2250 milligrams of sodium. Good maths, no love numbers. it. Okay, and then in addition to that, so that's, that's, that's all in the bottles. All the bottles. Yeah, and okay. I'll top up with water. So I know that I've got two and a half liters of fluids and all of those carbs. And if you need to pick bottles. up anything up on course, it's just water, yeah. but you've taken a good load of electrolytes, etc. on. Pretty much. Uh, any extra fuel as well, kind of in? Yeah, so yeah. in the bento box, I'll usually have some repair kit and I'll also have uh, what I'm famous for, the Snickers bar, and I can usually fit another gel in, and uh, that means that I've got another three gels that I'll just tuck down my tri suit um, and I'll have throughout the bike. And you just uh, grab them as you're coming through T1, shove so it down. So in T1, they'll just be in my helmet, uh -huh. just take them out in the suit as I'm running, put the helmet on, and uh, yeah, on so the that's, bike, I'll just take them out. That's pretty neat, so you're not. Yeah, electrical taping gels to your top tube is all no, neatly tucked away. No, everything's like tucked away, uh, nice and aero. And, and presumably with that setup, you can then monitor how much you're taking on, knowing that you, per hour, you're keeping on top of kind of the amount that you need to keep fueling. It's, um, there's no issues there. Yeah, so that's a good thing of having it in all these separate different bottles. Um, it's like I can really pace myself in that sense. On a 70.3, it's really easy. It's two hours, so I've got just the two times one litre. It's one bottle per hour. Yeah. An Ironman's a bit different, but usually I'll aim for an hour 20 for each bottle. Uh, and I'll just kind of, I'll do half the bike with one bottle, um, empty that, then switch around. And I'll be tapping into this one because it's a bit more concentrated. I'll just tap into that, you know, where when I feel yeah, like so you, you've said this in an Ironman, for instance, and this is more concentrated. Do you tap into that at a different point during the race? Um, no, or, it's, or it's, just... it's more about practically this is a bit more complicated to mm -hmm. when you're going 45, 50k an hour, you don't want to be reaching for this one. Yeah. So it's more like if there's a slow part of the course, then it's easy to reach down and then put it back in. So it's okay. more about when is it easy to access. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, and yeah, and it's more about, yeah, I'm halfway through the bike. Have I finished this bottle? Am I roughly halfway through this? Have I had my Snickers bar and two gels? Uh, and then by the end of the bike, or like in the last 30 minutes, I'll be making sure that I'm emptying whatever I've got on board. Great, okay. Couple of questions though, before we move on from the bike. Uh, first, I've got to ask about your elastic bands. Yes. A couple of people have asked me about this and I know that you've had a few questions or people coming past your bike and flicking Playing the guitar. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just uh, well, my first Ironman was Ironman Bolton. Uh, it's very bumpy. Mm. And on the way out of T1, actually, uh, one of my bottles almost fell out. Uh, this bottle almost fell out because it was heavy and with all the bumps, they just tend to slide out, even though these are quite solid cages. That's just an assurance. Um, and the one at the back, Mallorca, Ironman Mallorca, at some point just flew out. So uh, now I know that it's always gonna be there. And this elastic isn't too strong, but it's good enough. It'll at least slow it down. And so I'm always maybe kind of shoving it back into, into place. Um, maybe yeah. we need to find uh, another solution for you. That sounds... Uh... Yes, well, uh, it works for now. So, uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. and then final bit then, uh, that's all nutrition, but then what about spares? Because that is the other thing that a lot of people, they're trying to fit all the nutrition on and they're like, oh, where do I put my tube or my canister? Where do you put them currently on here then? Well, this is a UCI legal bike, so it's not got tons of uh, integrated storage. Yeah. Uh, I think some people have kind of done a hack and cut through the bottle and put stuff in there. I just tape an inner tube under the saddle. I mean, that's quite neat. Uh, and then I've got a CO2 canister, tie levers, an Allen key. Uh, I've got one of those um, valve extenders. Oh yeah. So yeah, it kind of rattles, but I mean, if gets you the can job power that, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. All right then, that's really good. And now moving on to the run, um, because we might come back to this a little bit, because I'm assuming you sort of you're taking quite a lot on here, so you're almost like preloading a tiny bit for the run. Yeah, so the, I mean, the bike is uh, it's quite practical in terms of your stomach's not going to be moving yeah. too much. So I tend to 
front load the bike. So in the first half of the bike, I'll take on more carbs per hour than in the second half. Usually uh, I'll have the, the sneakers bar, which is a solid, uh, just so that because you're sat, you, your stomach can kind of settle. Um, and it means that, you know, if I'm emptying the, all the bottles, I've got loads of sodium and kind of prepares me for the rest of the, of the race. And I kind of look at it as in, I want to come off the bike as fresh and as loaded as mm. possible um, so that I've got loads of energy for the run. And on the run, if, you know, if I forget, it, well, you rarely forget a gel, but it's usually I forget the salt tabs. Um, so at least I've got loads of sodium from, from the bike. Nice. Yeah. So in transition, we've got your cap and that's yeah. filled with a bunch of stuff. So you've got, lay this out. So we've got three 30 gram carb gels and then also an extra 30 gram plus. Caffeine it's got caffeine gel. in it. All right. Yeah. And do you take the, so this is a salt? No, food. so that's just the what the pack comes in and then you've got loads of salt tabs. I usually cut like four out uh -huh. and I try and have those on the run. Uh, these are each is 250 milligrams of sodium. So it's more of a top up. Some races uh, you get a pro fluid station where you can actually put a bottle and I'll usually have electrolytes in that bottle and pick that up on the okay. run. Um, that's what I did in St. George, for example. And again, and uh, j j just for practicality, you're just shoving this down the front of your tricep. Yeah, so out can... of transition, I'm, I've got the hat in my hand. There's also usually a watch in it, sunglasses. Just like put the gels down the tricep, put the sunglasses on, put the hat on, put the watch on and uh, go for your run. And the extra gels, those will also be at the pro fluid stations. Uh, got another four 30 grams. Yeah, because otherwise each. it's a lot of gels to be carrying it's yeah, extra, yeah. extra weight kind of like gives you man rest yeah brilliant oh that's really interesting um i know obviously some of this may sound really basic and silly to you um but i think actually i mean i found this fascinating uh everyone has their different methods but i think there's been a lot of interest in you because you are you've managed to increase the number of grams of cars per hour that you're taking on over time and guessing you've been doing that through your training and yeah that's a considerable amount for an iron man and then to be able to carry and be self-sufficient for 180k is quite impressive and have it all neatly tucked away so um impressive job uh, it, talking of which so i presume this is something you've been practicing training uh, yeah so every bike session for example i'm always on the turbo and i'll always have one of my bottles basically so 90 grams and then three of these uh and i'll try if it's a hard session then i'll try and do that bottle in an hour if it's a easier session and I, I'm not needing to hit that many grams of carbs an hour I'll, but you know I'll use it over several hours but it's more about getting accustomed to the taste the texture everything yeah awesome well this has been fascinating so thanks ever so much for running us through all of it today uh, best of luck for the rest of the season what's the next race next race is uh, PTO Ibiza yeah first race with the PTO it'll be on the 6th of May, it'll be very interesting. Awesome, well, yeah. best of luck for that. Thanks again. And yeah, if you enjoyed today's video, please do give it a thumbs up, give it a like. Um, let us know what you think to this setup in the comment section down below. If you've got any more questions, also drop them down below and uh, maybe Leon will get involved and try and answer some. Do another one, yeah. Thank you guys.